I am weary of Taormina and have no desire to stay in Sicily or in Europe at all, Lawrence informs Earl Brewster on the 2nd of January 1922. One source of frustration with Sicily is the recent collapse of Banco di Sconto, meaning it is impossible to cash anything here in the village, although, to be fair, that's still a problem today. Earl Brewster tries to lure Lawrence over to Candy, but he's not ready for the inner tranquillity offered by the Buddha. Meditation and the inner life are not my aim. I do not want peace, nor beauty, nor even freedom from pain. I want to fight and to feel new gods in the flesh. Even the influenzas and the headache are part of the fight and the fulfilment. Robert Mouncier is sent manuscripts of The Lady Bird, quite new, England My England, all rewritten, and handwritten versions of The Fox and The Captain's Doll, so that I needn't cart them about. With no major new projects on the horizon, he is unwilling to begin anything else, except perhaps a translation of Giovanni Verga's Mastro Don Gesualdo, which he deems it to be one of the genuine emotional extremes of European literature, just as Selma Langeloff or Nut Hampson may be the other extremes northwards. Thomas Secker requests Lawrence signs 50 copies of a special edition of Women in Love. He is happy to oblige, but wants to be paid for the signatures and negotiates a 20% commission on sales. This would help offset the Heseltine blackmail money. Philip Heseltine had taken exception to the betrayal of him in Women in Love, forcing Lawrence to rewrite passages. The edited version was republished in November. 1921. Having experienced so much poverty in his life, Lawrence is always fighting for his brethren. His latest cause is J.W. Nylander, who is very poor, and so he sends Robert Mouncier a volume of his short stories to see if he can get them published in magazines. He tries to butter up Catherine Carswell to translate the stories, but she's having none of it. If he wasn't a writer, Lawrence would have made a brilliant travel agent. Cicely Lambert is advised on travel times across Italy and when to tip. A porter at the station gets about a lira for every piece of luggage he carries for you. He also advises on why she should never arrive in a place like Rome without having your hotel room ready booked. But his own travel plans are chaotic changing every few days or so. Jan Jutta, who had illustrated Sea and Sardinia, asks him to track across Nyasaland with him, which Lawrence turns down, instead requesting Jutta to join him on a proposed trip to Taos in March. But wherever he goes next, he must leave Sicily, no matter how beautiful it may be. We sit in our salotta, warm and still, with the lamp on the table. Outside, through the door, I see the moon through the begonia leaves of our terrace, and all quite still, only from time to time, the stove cackles. When I think of going away, I'm a bit melancholy, but inwardly, I am certain that I must go. This is a lovely end, but better a difficult beginning than an end only. I feel it is my destiny, at least, to try the States, if only to know I hate them. Then a week later, he changes his mind and takes up Earl Brewster's offer to visit him in Ceylon. Perhaps it was the realisation that what awaited him in Taos was arty and literary types. Or as Lawrence puts it, smoking, steaming shits. <laughs> <laughs>